If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we want to notice about this circuit is that the two capacitors are in parallel with one another. And we know that the following is true for parallel capacitors. The equivalent capacitance of the two capacitors is simply the sum of the individual capacitances. So what we'll do is we'll add the capacitances together and by doing that we essentially get one equivalent capacitor. And the capacitance of that equivalent capacitor turns out to be five microfarads. So if you want, you can imagine that these two have been combined into just one capacitor whose capacitance is five microfarads. In fact, we can even redraw the circuit so that we have just one capacitor. Now, we have a simplified version of the circuit and what we can do next is determine the total charge within the circuit. And so that total charge on those two capacitors would be equal to their equivalent capacitance times the potential difference supplied by the battery. Now the question noted the potential difference supplied by the battery and we just figured out the equivalent capacitance. So let's go ahead and calculate the total charge that would be on those two capacitors. And that total charge turns out to be 60 microcoulombs. Notice the unit of microcoulombs because we plugged in microfarads for the capacitance. Okay, so we have this single equivalent capacitor again, whose total charge is 60 microcoulombs and total capacitance is shown. This is all done before the switch was closed, keep in mind. So what happens next is the switch is closed, forming a completed RC circuit. We call it an RC circuit because it has a resistor and a capacitor. Now we know for an RC circuit there is a value called the time constant which is equivalent to the resistance present in the circuit times the capacitance of the capacitor in the circuit. We can see from the picture that we have the resistance as well as the capacitance so we can easily calculate the time constant and then we'll see how we can use that in a moment. Notice that for the capacitance we are plugging in 5 times 10 to the minus 6 and the reason we want to do that is because we need to use the standard unit of farads as opposed to microfarads. Remember that to convert from microfarads to farads, you just multiply by 10 to the minus 6. So when we perform this calculation, we get 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds for the time constant of this circuit. Now we're going to hold on to this value and uh, use it momentarily. Now we know that for a discharging RC circuit, the following equation holds true we have the charge lowercase q at a particular time equaling the original charge stored on the capacitor times the term e to the negative t over the time constant. Now we have the time constant, we have the original charge on the capacitor, and the time is stated in the question as being one millisecond. Now of course one millisecond is one times ten to the minus three seconds. So we can go ahead and plug in all three of those known values and this will tell us the charge on the capacitor after one millisecond has passed. And when we simplify that we can see that the charge on the capacitor is approximately 40.2 microcoulombs. Now the key idea is that this 40.2 microcoulombs of charge which is present one millisecond after the switch was closed, is distributed across the original two capacitors. So we can't say that the charge on both capacitors is 40.2 microcoulombs. No, that charge will be distributed between the two capacitors. Why don't we bring back the original two capacitors? So here are those capacitors. We can see again that they are in parallel just as they were before. Now we know parallel capacitors have the same potential difference. So what we can do is set the potential difference across the three microfarad capacitor equal to the potential difference across the two microfarad capacitor. Now we know that potential difference is equivalent to the charge on the capacitor divided by its capacitance. Well we know the individual capacitances so we can fill in three microfarads for the capacitor or for the capacitance here and then two microfarads for this capacitance the unit of microfarads would actually cancel so we could simplify the equation. And then perhaps if we multiply both sides of the equation by 3, we could then see that Q3 is equal to 3 halves Q2. Now that might be a little bit confusing, but let's recall that the total charge we had calculated as being 40.2 microcoulombs. Well, the total charge again is spread across the 3 microfarad capacitor as well as the 2 microfarad capacitor. So we basically have 
a system of two equations with two unknowns. So we can easily solve for both Q2 and Q3. Maybe what we could do is substitute this expression in for Q3 of this equation. And then we can combine the like terms to make 5 halves Q2. And then we re recall that the total charge was 40.2 microcoulombs. So now by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2 fifths, we can isolate Q2. And we can see that it's equal to approximately 16.1 microcoulombs. And now that we have Q2, we can go back and find Q3 by plugging in our known value for Q2. And we get approximately 24.1 microcoulombs for the charge on the 3 microfarad capacitor. So this represents the answer to part A of the question, and then this would represent the answer to part B. So now for part C, we can find the current through the resistor by recalling that current is equal to the potential difference divided by the resistance. We can see we have a 500 ohms resistance. What we don't yet have is the potential difference. But since all three circuit elements are in parallel with one another, whatever the potential difference on the capacitor here or on this capacitor will be the same as that on the resistor. In other words, all three circuit elements have the same potential difference across them. So what we can do perhaps is just take the two microfarad capacitor and calculate the potential difference across it. And we can do that because we know both the charge and the capacitance. So we just divide the charge by the capacitance. Both are in micro terms. So when we divide, we get a standard value of volts. And that's roughly 8.04 volts. So that's the potential difference across the two microfarad capacitor, but it's also the potential difference across the resistor. So we can now just take that potential difference and divide it by the resistance to get the current. And we get approximately 1.61 times 10 to the minus 2 amps. And if you need to convert that into milliamps, you just multiply by 10 to the positive 3. So you would get 16.1 milliamps. And this would be the correct answer to part. C. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. You can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.